Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Folly Waste on Warfare Settlement Mode playthrough and we are up to episode 12 of season 4. This is the penultimate episode. Next week will be the finale and I hope you're looking forward to seeing how this all wraps up this season. But we have a very pressing matter to attend to today and we are with New Hope. We're with New Hope through to the end now. So that means we have to very quickly get our Settlement Mode stuff out of the way and then we'll talk about what we're doing today. So we are resolving to explore cards and I can re-roll one of them. Let's take that one and let's take this one. Simple as that. We'll just take from the top if I do need to re-roll one of them. Eldorado Gas Station. It is filled with giant mantises. You can choose to grab the food and gain three food items. Wait a few minutes to gain two or wait 30 minutes to gain one and then you roll a blue die. Well, the most common result is the bottle cap. Do you get a negative if you don't get... There's no negative, so I'm just going to aim for the fences. Uh, we're not going to bring any food into the battle with us, though. We'll just cover that as New Hope stocking up in case they can't get supplies anywhere else. Oh, it was so close. It was the nuke, and then it rolled to the start of the last second, so no, nothing from that. Fair enough. And then the other one, National Gar Guard Barracks. Okay, so you draw one weapon card and either keep the weapon card or give it to Lincoln and then gain a... Oh, we've had this card before. Huh. I'm going to re-roll it just purely because, like, I think it was two episodes ago we had that very card. I do shuffle the deck, I promise. What's that? Dog meat? Someone needs help. The caravan's master is up to their chest and oozing quicksand when you arrive. Do you risk helping the stranger back to solid ground? If so, gain 75 caps and you take one damage. Yeah, I'll do that. So we'll gain 75 caps for the settlement and Nate will start the game with one damage. On that note, let's go hear what we're doing today. Quest 12, quest name, where the power flows. Quest overview. The mechanist had given Atom too many potential military locations to check one by one. However, in order to find which military installation the children of Atom had decided to use for their plans was as simple as going to the nearest satellite relay station. Bringing a military base fully online to launch nuclear weapons would be more than a little blip in the system. The settlers of New Hope had to be quick if they wanted to stop what was going to happen. So you've heard what the team is doing today. I'll cover the enemies and whatnot once our team is actually deployed. Here is who is coming today. So we have the Mechanist. He has his default setup. So it's the Mechanist Armor, the Protectron's Gaze and a Mr. Handy Buzz Blade. He's bringing along the Strange Securitron that's got the Gatling Laser and the SMG. And then from New Hope's Usuals, we have basically our A-team here. We have Nora who's been given that Gauze Rifle because it's a weapon unto its own in her hands. So she's using that. Nate, this time, along with his Grognak sword and usual gear, he's actually going to bring the Incendiary Assault Rifle. Feels like that might be more useful today. Um, then we have John, and John is not coming in power armor this time. I want to see how strong he is with that Super Sledge without power armor. It means his strength's only, only a 6, which is still pretty decent. So we'll see if he can do some real damage with that Super Sledge, despite not wearing the power armor. I just want to try and gauge his, his power level. So he still has the Kneecapper 44 as well. And then we have Pennyworth who has the setup of Mr. Handy SMG, Laser, and Buzzsaw. And that is it. So they're going to be deployed, and then I'll go over the enemies they're facing, or rather specifically what their main, or how they achieve their main goal of working out where Atom has activated a nuclear weapons facility. And we'll be back after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store, and it will help me out as well. Thanks. So here is where the team is deployed. They're sort of hiding behind the rock and barrels there and they are looking at the facility they need to get to in order to find the information they want. And it's mostly automated defences. There's actually a few radio stations, communication arrays in Fallout 76 that are a bit like this. Sometimes they have super mutants, but there's a lot of turrets and things around them. So that's kind of what I based this on. So for the majority of the enemies, it is actually turrets. If we just move the camera up here, we can see all the enemy forces right here. So to the bottom of your camera here, we have two normal machine gun turrets. We have two laser turrets next to the console, which is going to be relevant in a second here. We have a maintenance uh, protectron, the, what is it called again? The utility protectron, who will be starting with two super armor. Oh, on that note, the damage Nate is taking, I'm just going to make his super armor. He starts the game with eat that, so he won't have any super armor. And then we also have the firefighting 
Protectron, who's just come out of that door up there, maybe he detects that there's going to be a fire soon. Uh, what is his official name? It is... Fire Brigader. That's it. He's a Protectron Fire Brigader. So, they're not the main goal. Technically, the main goal is either the Mechanist or John must get to that console and pass a computer test, which on John is an 8 and on the Mechanist is a 7. So John's actually better at using the computer. One of them has to get there and do that, but it's not just a case of, oh, it'll take them two turns or maybe three to just madly run up there because all the turrets are obviously going to have three reaction shots each. So if they try and do that, chances are they're just going to get murdered. If both of them fall, that's an instant loss. So one of them at least needs to get to that console and live, which means we're going to have to try and deal with the turrets, bait out some shots against targets who can take it, like the Securitron and uh, Pennyworth can probably take the hits better than the rest of them, while trying to just deal with the general damage by trying to take them off the table. I, th I think the Gauze Rifle will be good at that. Energy damage does better against turrets than uh, kinetic damage, so that's also why some of the gear I brought has been taken. And the Protectrons, hopefully we'll just be able to avoid them. They are going to act as aggro from the start, otherwise they'll just be wandering around randomly, because you know I could just choose not to shoot them. So they're going to be aggroed, they de detect that there's something wrong, and that is what we're doing today. So with that, we are ready to jump into turn one of five and see if we can get this done. So as the game begins, we're going to test the uh, lethality of these turrets. That's a good word, lethality. So the strange Securitron has moved up yellow, after which time turrets that have clear line of sight will use up their reaction. I'm choosing to do it that way so that I can't just bait them to try and shoot through cover constantly because I'd make it too easy. So the two machine gun turrets, they would have to shoot through this fence. They're not going to activate. However, the two laser turrets have a clear line of sight to shoot long range at them. Their range is green and then green. And at long range, it's purely just a skill die roll, and they're looking for fours. So they're both going to shoot. He does have an action left after that. I'm going to choose, depending on how well this goes, after I see the result, what his second action is. So one of the turrets is doing a reaction, and it misses. The other turret is doing one of its three reactions. I rolled it out of the thing, but it's still on camera, so I'm counting it. It was an eight. So that is two whiffs. So now I get a choice. Do I shoot at one of the turrets, or... So I move up again and bait out even more overwatch and I think, what kind of armour you got? Three armour? You can take the hits my man, you can take the hits. So we're going to move and we are going to move to here and that's going to bait out two more attacks from the laser turrets and one from this machine gun turret. The other one would have to shoot through this tank catcher here so that wouldn't do anything. Now is that short range? Still not short range, that's good news for us. They don't get to throw in some armor breaks, so the two laser turrets will do again first. And that's a crit, so it definitely hits. It's two energy damage versus three energy armor. He fully blocks it, well done. And then the other laser turret misses. Fantastic, you love to see it. So that's two of each of their overwatch, well, prepares, but it's overwatch really. And the laser turret, what do they hit on? They are hitting on fours. So the one laser turret in the middle on the platform that's just visible at the top of your screen, he hit. So that is two damage versus three armor again. He blocked it all, well done. So that is great because the Securitron is the tankiest thing we have. So I wanted him to soak up as much damage as possible. And he has absolutely done that. Technically one of the Protectrons should have activated first because I don't think you even include the turrets when you're determining who has less models and even if you did I think New Hope still has more this time around because before 5-6 you had to do. So technically this should have happened first. I randomised between the two of the Protectrons. It was the Fire Brigader and he only has range red so he'd just be moving up twice anyway. So he's moved to there and it doesn't really matter if I accidentally went with someone else first. I guess technically now though it should go to the other Protectron. So we'll do it that way and then I'm free to just kind of try and bait out some more of those turret overwatches. So on that note the utility Protectron has moved up and he has range black on that nail gun of his so he's going to take a pot shot at John who is in cover. He's got two yellow with the skill die on this. He's usually on a three so it's basically on a crit. Oh he actually got it. Oh wow. Well the bonus armor that he would get from being in cover is shattered by the result on the second yellow die which I hope is visible. If it wasn't there you go. So, it is just straight up 2 damage versus John's 2 armor. He blocks one and his super armor that he gets for being a unique character takes away the other, but that's the super armor gone. I'll take that. 
So I'm doing some key activations. It's just me now, other than the turrets reacting to me moving into line of sight. So I've moved the mechanist once from where they are, only one of the laser turrets can see him, the one that's right at the top of the steps. The other one can't quite get angle yet. So I'm gonna play it by ear again, see what happens first, and then decide what I'm doing with their second action. So the last activation on that turret, it is a hit, oof. So that is two energy and on the mechanist's armor, energy defense, oh, it's two plus one, that's pretty good. Well, unfortunately only the one blocked, so that is one damage. Not as lucky. How much health do you have in total? You have six. Um, and that's the last of their overwatch. This turn gone. Hmm, how far can I get with another yellow move? No, definitely can't get there. I'm gonna move, not a full move, I'm gonna move here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm behind the fence. I would be in cover from, I believe, all the shots, including the other laser turret at that particular angle. So, yeah, I'm just going to move there so that none of the overwatches trigger. I need him to move up, but not so fast to get his blown off the table. Because next turn, keep in mind, obviously, they get three overwatch shots again. So it becomes even more difficult. Well, I activated my other bullet sponge, which is Pennyworth. He moved red. I couldn't really leave the thing down because, it, you know, he went like an L-shape. So not quite able to just leave that there and show it. But he ended up just there after his one red move. That's going to trigger... Oh, actually... That's kind of obscuring. I thought it was going to trigger that gun. It will trigger that gun, assuming he's within range black. Do you think he is? Oh, sorry, no, it's green, green I'm talking about. Green, green. He's definitely in green, green. So, yeah, I thought it was going to trigger the middle one, which is who I was going to go after, but no, it's the one that hasn't fired yet. So, it's going to shoot once. I'll just roll the skill die here, since it is just the skill die at long range, and of course it hits. So that is two against Pennyworth's armor, which is three, I think. Two plus one, sorry, against Kinetic. And he actually fully blocked it. Hopefully, yeah, that was on camera. So that's the first of those three Overwatch shots gone over there. For his other action, I want to try and do some damage. But if that turret can't see fully because of cover, that means the turret itself is in cover. Hmm, let's see, what could he do? He could fire at range green plus red with the SMG he can't reach the laser turret he'll shoot at the turret that just shot at him he's aiming up so he's not getting obscured by the cover it is a long range shot so unfortunately it's just a green die but hey that might help it land I'm going to need to use the dice tray for this in case we need to roll extra so here we go <laughs> that's the first crit fail of the game so no, no extras required there at all so because I might need John to also go to the console, I'm going to go with Nate first. And he is just going to stay where he is and shoot at that central turret. He has clear line of sight. It will shoot back after each of his shots. He's in cover and it can't, if it did full damage, it wouldn't be able to kill him. So I'm just going to do Nate's two shots first. But then he is going to use up the other two Overwatch still on that turret. It's long range with the incendiary assault rifle. He's getting a black and a blue die because there is a chance to set it on fire. And he is hitting on fives with this. First shot is crit fail. Wow, that's two in a row. Good job, Nate. And then his second shot is a crit fail. Is it was that literally the same roll? Well that's two crit fails in a row. Fantastic. And then the turret will then shoot back at him at long range. Yep, long range. So it is just the skill die on fours. Although actually it's less because he's in cover. So neither of those hit. So that was, everyone missed. He got two crit fails, the turret whiffed twice, hitting the barrels. I went with Nora, just leaving John after that. She passed in the jelly test to hop over the barrels. There is the roll for it. She got a four. Her jelly is five, I believe. Her jelly is seven, Never mind. So she made it over, at which point she's finished an action. So turrets that can see her will shoot her. The last overwatch from the laser turret with one is going to do that. It has long range again, so it's just the skill die. And it hit. Of course it did. Two energy against her current energy armor, which is three plus one. Well, only the plus one saves her, which was the super armor she starts with. And one damage gets through, so that's just peachy. And then the second overwatch from the machine gun turret is... Is that a hit for a machine gun turret? It is. Ugh. So that's two versus three. She fully blocked that one, so that's good enough. It still has one overwatch left. And for her other action, she is going to fire into the central 
machine gun turret with that gauze rifle. She moved once. It is within short range, which for the gauze rifle is black. So armor die plus she primed it once, so extra black die. And here's hoping she just one shots it. I want her to one tap this and just blow it off the table. Well, she hit it, but it's not good results on the other two dice. They blanked out completely. So the base damage is three. And is it energy? No, I keep forgetting. No, it's kinetic for the gauze rifle. So it has two armor. It blocked one and took two. That central turret. Oops, right there which means it has three health left. The final overwatch from the machine gun turret will react off of her firing that. So it is back to the skill die for the turret and it failed and they don't do quick actions. So that's all the turret overwatches used up now for this round, although there's only John to go, so it doesn't really matter. I have to decide what I want to do with him though. I didn't foresee him doing a no guts, no glory, but that's what I'm going to do with him. He moved yellow, he's in the middle of the field. He is going to be in a lot of danger at the next turn and if I go with them early anyway hopefully I'll be able to soak up shots with other people I'm going to fire that kneecapper into that central machine gun turret and I want to try and destroy it he's getting two yellow dice and a blue die for the kneecapper I'm not sure how you break the kneecaps of a turret but maybe he'll find a way because he is John well it's a hit comes down to a three does the star break a kneecap on a turret uh let's see yes actually it does so he broke the kneecap of the turret it's two damage so it can't kill him he blocks one, takes one, so that's three damage. It has two health left, that central one. Not being able to destroy a single turret in turn one was less than ideal. To the event card, I think that double crit fail from Nate is really going to cost us. Let's go with this one. Low sun, all investigation skills are minus two penalty. Well, for the purposes of what we're doing today, aka nothing. Round two gets started with one of the Protectrons activating. It is the utility one and he has clear line of sight of John so he will prioritize him. I think he is actually slightly closer in Pennyworth anyway but the clear line of sight cinches it. So what's well, a couple of nail guns in your spine between friends. Hopefully John doesn't get too hurt by this. First shot, oh it's a hit and it breaks two of his armor. Ugh, that leaves him with one armor against two damage. He blocks none of it and takes two. He is fairly tanky. For a settler though, so it's not too bad as long as this one also isn't a good hit. Also, what is with Protectrons who usually have terrible chances to hit always like Look at this! It's a crit! Okay, breaks one of his armor, leaves him with two. He blocks one, takes one. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon because clearly he's in a great deal of danger now. I think he has seven health though, does he? Yes he does, so he has four left, but that's still pretty nasty. So now we're going to do some back and forth shooting and I'm going to activate the strange Securitron to make this happen. He's going to stay where he is and he's going to fire his Securitron SMG at the machine gun turret that there's a chance to blow up. And if he succeeds, great, he's still going to get shot at by the, both the laser turrets. If he doesn't succeed, he's going to get shot at by three of them. But it uses up some of the overwatch and he seems like the best bet for soaking the damage because of his three armor. He's been doing pretty well with that. so. We're going to give it a go. It is in short range because it's range green for the SMG short range. So black and green die. And it is a crit, which I hope was on camera. Nothing special, unfortunately, which means it's just two flat damage versus two armor. It doesn't block anything and blows up. Thank goodness for that. There's oh, stuck to the base. There is some nasty activations off the table. However, as I said, it's shooting back and forth. He's about to get shot at, so this could be bad. Both laser turrets will see him. The other machine gun turret cannot, and I think he's in short range now. Let's just see. No, he is not. No, never mind. So it's just the skill die. That's actually not bad. Using up as many shots as we can get out of them before they start rolling extra dice along with the skill die is a good thing. That's a crit, well, not crit fail, sorry. It's just a fail. And then the other one, that's a hit. So that's two damage versus three armor. Ah, he didn't get lucky that time, it got through. So that's two damage and one of their overwatch each. Now he has another action. And I wanted to see how good that first shot went before I decided what to do with him. I think he is just going to stand still and he's going to fire a long range shot. Just turn him to show who I'm shooting at. And he is going to shoot at the laser turret that's at the top of the stairs. The one to the top left of your screen there. They'll once again get to shoot at him again after that. Long range with the SMG is just a green die, it loses the black die. Eight comes down to a seven, it's a whiff. And then they'll both fire at him with just the skill die. 
Seven, not good enough. Second turret. Crit fail. Okay. So each of the laser turrets only have one reaction left. Unfortunately for John, the fire brigader Protectron thinks he's on fire, so he's going to come and spray him with ice cold, maybe even liquid nitrogen cryojet. And it might be nasty. I don't think we've ever seen one of these attack. It's only range red and it's just the blue die because it can do some weird stats effects, including the freeze one, which if it happens, I'm going to have to look it up because I have no idea how that works. What is he hitting on? I believe it's a four for him. Yeah, he's slightly better at it than the utility one. Although the utility one's landed almost every shot. That's a five with a nuke. So it is a miss. What would the nuke have done? Nothing. He's looking for bottle cap. A bottle cap would put out the fire on someone who's on fire and a star does the freeze effect. So we're not going to get to see that yet. So it's just over to my team now dealing with the leftover overwatches of the three surviving turrets. I moved Nora to where you can see her, just moved her yellow forward. Uh, the smoke is just there for dramatic effect. I'm going to do that where the turrets get exploded and it's not going to obscure line of sight or anything like that. Although if I'd thought ahead that would have been a pretty cool mechanic to give a bit more cover for them to use but I didn't lay that out at the start so I'm not going to start doing it now. Might be a useful thing for in the future. Um, all three turrets are going to take a shot at her. The two laser turrets are going to use up their last overwatches now, which is good, because that means the mechanist can make a lot of progress. So, it, long range is just a skill die. The first one unfortunately hits her, because of course it does. Two damage versus three armor. Oh, I'm just showing you the rolls, apologies. She blocked the two damage with that one. And then the other laser turret. Oof, almost a crit fail, but it doesn't matter, that's still a miss. So that's all their overwatches used up, and it's also going to be long range for the machine gun turret to fire its first of three. So it's just a skill die. It's a crit fail. Excellent. Now, she's not going to move again. I'm going to fire. She moved once, so we're going to get a black die thrown in. I'm going to shoot at the laser turret at the top of the stairs. Doesn't really matter, they're both identical, and basically they both need to go. So, come on, Nora. There's a crit. Bottle can't do anything. Nope, but that is a total of four damage, and that's what you love to see. Four damage against the kinetic armor of a turret, a laser turret that is. Uh, oh, they only have one. Yeah, they only have one energy armor. And they didn't block it, so that is four damage. That is more like it, that's how you get stuff done. You ask Nora to do it with a gauze rifle, you don't get neat. So that is four damage of its five health gone. Now, unfortunately, that is going to trigger the machine gun turret shooting at her again. So let's cover that. A six is a whiff. So, good job Nora, you got stuff done. So I moved up with the mechanist because of the, the tank catcher thing there, or tank black, I forgot what they're officially called. Um, he cannot be seen by the machine gun turret who still does have one overwatch left. I'm going to make him use Protectron's gaze to try and take out that damaged laser turret. Because it's at long range, which is red plus red, let me just make sure red plus red is actually in range, yes it is. No extra dice, it's purely a skill die roll, and he doesn't have a fantastic chance to hit, it's a 4. But hey, we're just going to try it because I don't want to walk him up there by himself. So we'll just roll it here, and it's a crit fail, so never mind, never mind at all. Pennyworth is hopping up onto that box, um, since he's a uh, Mr. Gutsy, I'm choosing that it doesn't require a, a, an agility test or anything like that. I don't think they can climb anyway, but he can certainly hover, so I'm just saying he can get up on that. He's going to get shot at by the machine gun turret as a result. And it's the last overwatch of the turn for any of the turrets. He's at short range now, so there's an armor die thrown in. And that's a 7, so it's a whiff. And that means he is now free to take a pot shot at someone. His maximum range on his Mr. Handy SMG is green plus red. I might try and take out that turret if it can reach green plus red. Is that good enough? It absolutely is. I'll take a long range shot and try and take out that turret so that the mechanist can run towards the console next turn. At long range, it's a purely just a green die thrown in. He just needs it to land, or I just need it to land. Remember when No Hope was last on the table and they couldn't miss? Oh, Mr. Gutsy slash Pennyworth can remember because that's a hit for three damage and it can only block at most two, so it's destroyed no matter what. They didn't block any. Fantastic. So that is kaboom. The second of the four turrets destroyed, that gives the mechanist a clean, or more of a clean run up the stairs. John is still very much in danger though, but that's all the overwatch has done too, so he can probably just double move. Give me a second to think, because Nate still needs to go as well. Alright, I've made my mind up. Nate did a L kind of move to end up where you can see him. He's going to take a long range shot at the turret who I did not remove the last overwatch from, but he did use it up. There we go. And it's just to try and do some damage to... 
and also just provide themselves as a target for the Protectrons. That is a fail with a quick action. With that quick action, he can do a prepare of his own. Sure, he might use it when one of the Protectrons activate at the start of the next turn. Sure, and we can just cover John's activation right now. Um, he is going to double move. I need to get him out of immediate danger of the Protectrons. So, but he's also going to take the, the most dangerous route. He is double moving to go straight forwards. There's my other yellow marker. There it is. And he's going to come in behind the mechanist here. Although actually maybe there will be better. Kind of behind or at that. He's not done a full move. There was a tiny bit of movement left. But the mechanist is in the way. So that means they're both kind of there. I'm going to sprint up the staircase next turn. Because we can't really afford to dilly dally. And let's see what event card is going to take us into the next round. It's going to be this one. Fresh. Any yellow die with a blank face is treated as a minus one instead. Okay, so I'll try and remember that. Any roll that applies to enemies as well as me though, so that's, that's okay. It makes the armor break dice slightly better. For round three of a potential five, the utility protectron was randomly selected of the two, and he is going to shoot at Pennyworth because Pennyworth is now the closest threat that is visible and no cover or anything like that. We might actually see that event card doing something right here. It's on threes, which you'd think would be, you'd think would be a terrible chance to hit. It actually comes down to a minus, or it comes down to one because that's a minus one. But this utility protector always seems to roll three or under. It's unbelievable. Breaks one of Pennyworth's armor, and that was not blocked anyway. So the full two damage goes through. Ow! And here comes another volley of nails. He couldn't possibly land this as well, because that's three hits in a row. He's done needing a three or under. Well, yeah, okay, he essentially rolled exactly the same thing again, except it was an actual minus one this time. Breaks one armor. I think he still blocks because it's two plus one, is it? Oh, it's two plus one. Yeah, sorry. So he actually did block one of that first damage that got through. So that would be a one, and then he just took... He blocked one, took one. So it is still two damage in total. Sorry, I forgot that he had part super armor against kinetic damage. So not as bad, but... What is up with, it's always the utility protectron that should be the worst shot, and he always lands his hits. The Securitron has moved here, which will trigger the laser, and then he's going to fire at it, so the laser's going to get to fire again. I don't think he can one-shot it, so we're just going to do both the laser shots first. And he is in close range now, so it gets a yellow die, which might mean that event is really relevant. That's a swing and a miss for the first shot, the first overwatch. This would technically happen after he's fired. It comes down to four thanks to that event card, so yes it is a hit. Against his three armor, he blocks one, takes one. That's him up to three damage of his eight health. He is pretty tanky. And that turret has one overwatch shot left. Um, the machine gun turret did not fire at him because he is massive. Like, even though he's very large, the stairs are obscuring at least over half of him. So for his close range shot with that Mr. Handy SMG, because it's range green. Yep, that is a black plus a green die. Black, green die. Please hit it. There's a crit. Oh, that is a crit, all right. That is five damage. Five damage, huh? And it is kinetic damage, though. So five kinetic damage versus two armor. If he whiffs this, it's dead. He rolled a three. It's on camera. There, it was a three. He whiffed it. That is a one shot. That is more like it. Kaboom! Okay, that is a straight run to the console now. That is good news. And now might be the time we learn about the frost status effect, or freeze, or ice, or whatever on earth it's called, because the Fire Brigade Protectron is spraying Cryojet into Nora's face. She's right in front of him, so it's twice into her blue die on top. And that's a crit fail for the first one, so it ain't going to be that one. Second one is a six, which is too much it needed to be a four yep so he actually whiffed at point blank range twice that's more of what i would expect from a protectron so it's over to my team i totally forgot nate had a prepare so he could have done an overwatch against one of the protectrons but i'm basically just ignoring them uh so pennyworth is going to activate and fire his mr handy laser into the machine gun turret twice definitely should have been using that the entire time because i said it at the top the turrets have worse energy defense and he's in short range for it which is just range blue it doesn't have a long range so it's a yellow, green, and skill die, and the turret is going to get to react to him firing, but I don't think it will kill him, so we'll just handle Pennyworth's two attacks first. That is a success with an armor break, so it's two flat damage. Now, let me just check. 
did not only got one energy defense, so he has no energy defense, so the two damage gets through. We'll just do Pennyworth's other attack now. Eight comes down to six, that actually is enough. It breaks his one armor, so it does two more damage, leaving it on one health, but it gets to shoot him twice at close range, so that's just one yellow die. So this is the turret firing back for that first hit, is a crit fail, excellent. The second overwatch after getting shot at is a success for three damage. So that's three damage versus three armor. No, two plus one, keep forgetting it's two plus one. Only the plus one saves him, so that's two more damage to Pennyworth. So Pennyworth's up to four damage, but he got that turret to his last bit of health, which means hopefully Nate can finally land a shot on something and take it out. So Nate has moved up. He is not in base to base with the utility protector on, and I don't think this has the one inch rule where if you're within an inch you count. I don't quite remember. If it does, apologies, and I've just forgotten. But I'm not counting him as being locked in combat with the utility protector on. It will trigger the final overwatch the turret is hopefully ever going to get. So we're going to have to come back here, pull back, see if he lands it. Comes down to five, not good enough. And that means Nate is in close range to fire that incendiary assault rifle. So that is green, blue, black. That hasn't been his problem though, really. It's landing the hit itself. There you go. That's a crit with basically, it breaks one armor. And, well, the symbols are hopefully not going to matter. But the star would have set it on fire, which would have killed it anyway. So it's just two damage versus reduced down to one armor. Oh, so he can't stop one armor again. Yeah, okay. He has exploded. The last turret is gone. Now it's a mad dash for the console and just hopefully ignoring the protectrons. So the mechanist has activated. It gets him up just in front of the console. So that means next turn he can definitely sample or try and hack once. And then John is just going to get to the top of the stairs there just behind him. So if he fails, that means John gets a go at it and his chance is actually higher. Keep that in mind. So that should mean at the top of the next turn, after a Protectron activates, we're good. Uh, we still have Nora to do something with, and she has got that God's Rifle. It'd be a shame not to use it, so I think she's going to turn it on the Protectrons. Spritz me with cold water, will you? God's Rifle twice into Protectron br uh, Fire Brigader. Only the yellow die because she hasn't moved. That's an 8, not quite good enough. She needs a 7. Second chance. It hits, it breaks one armour. What kind of armour does he have? His kinetic armor is down to three as a result of that. So three damage versus, okay, he blocks one and he takes two. I presume he has normal protector on health. Uh, he, oh, he has eight actually. So he's got, he has to lose exactly four before he starts trying to explode. But that takes us to the event for this turn. Can you imagine if we get the event where it's like a turret is buried and there's actually an extra one and it appears somewhere horrible? Swarm of Flies, all lockpicking skills are at minus two. Thankfully, that's not the type of test we're doing. That could have been catastrophic if it was related to hacking. So this could be the last activation before the end of the game, and it is the utility protector on that never misses. He's going to shoot point blank into Nate twice. Let's see if he can continue the trend. He's hit four times in a row so far. Maybe more than that, actually. Oh, there you go. That is a fail. Not a crit fail, but a fail. Your streak is broken. Now watch him roll a crit and, like, two extra damage. Well, he hit, because of course he did. Breaks one armor, two damage, versus Nate's reduced armor is down to two. Or is it three, actually? Oh no, it is two. And he didn't block any of it and took two damage. Just a nail through the side of his chest to go out on. Sure, why not? I was going to make the mechanist do this, but John has the higher percentage chance. So he's going to move to the console for his first action. And then we're just going to skill die, and his skill, I believe I said it was an 8. It is indeed, his hacking skill is an 8. So let's see if he achieves it. That's a 6. He successfully accesses the console and gets the information he needs. So that is a win. So with the information gained here today, New Hope now knows which pre-war military facility Atom has activated and was working from, which means that they know where he's going to try and launch those nukes from. And I think you know what that means for the thrilling conclusion to season four in a week. I hope you come back for that. I hope you've been enjoying the season. As always, you can talk about it in the comments if you want. And please do remember to show your support for if you can't spare any money, just liking the video, subscribing, commenting does all help in the algorithm. But if you can spare anything extra, becoming a channel member gets you access to each new episode a day early. It also gets you access to some other series a whole week early if you want. And... 
Uh, you can also check out the channel sponsor to pick out something for yourself. They carry Metaphysics games, and if you buy anything via that affiliate link, that means I get a little bit of compensation as well. Either way, thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time for the conclusion. Ta-ta for now.